Hello, welcome to the Senseless Platform demo session. The first thing you see when you log into the platform and probably the most important aspect is obviously the asset map. It shows you in a blink of an eye the locations of all your assets which you've equipped uh, with one of our battery powered uh, trackers. You see that we're grouping assets which are together in a specific location. Uh, so let us zoom in a bit uh, and take a look at this factory location in Belgium uh, near the Ghent Harbour. Uh. So what you can see is the assets located inside this factory and we've uploaded an indoor floor plan of the factory, uh, which, which you can do on your own. Uh, you can also see that on the map uh, we've drawn this area, which is a geozone, uh, which is uh, the factory Belgium uh, geozone. Now let's zoom in into a specific individual asset uh, and look at the asset detail page. Uh, what we see first of all is the identification card of the asset. Uh, you see the asset has a name, uh, which is given by the user. It has a serial, uh, which is the hardware identification. It has an end user identification, in this case uh, chosen to be the same as the serial, the product type. We see to which organization it belongs and it has a couple of asset tags. Uh, asset tags or labels uh, which you can associate to the asset and these labels uh, will become super handy when you start to define reports, alert rules, etc. Uh, they also allow you uh, to quickly filter items in lists. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, so I'm filtering here all the assets which map with the type jig. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, what we also see is the current location of the asset uh, visualized here. We see the last motion activity. And uh, so it was stopped uh, yesterday and uh, we're today the fifth. And we see the geo zones where the asset is in. Uh, we're also tracking the historic movements of the assets. Uh, so you can see it was traveling uh, from London uh, to the factory in Belgium, to a location in Düsseldorf and to a location in Hamburg. Right? Now, what we're showing here is the stops of the trip. We have a similar visualization, uh, but where we do not focus on the map and the individual locations, but where we show the transition from one geozone to the other. Uh, same information, but at a more abstract level. And we can see here, uh, we were in the factory UK at the reception uh, for 21 hours from October 10th to October 11th. Uh, so the Geozone visit view gives you a more abstract view uh, to follow up where your assets have been. Another aspect I want to show is the activity chart. Uh, a key aspect in many cases of asset management is to maximize usage of assets. The best place to see how often an individual asset was used is the activity view. And you can see here for the month of October, the asset was in motion for three days, 18 hours and 11 minutes. We can see also individually the breakout hour by hour when that happened. We can also zoom out more and see this at the yearly level. You can see here the asset started its activities in the month of September and we're now November and so this is the last uh, the last day. Now let's leave the individual asset level behind and focus at a bit a higher level uh, at the geozone level. And what I'm showing here is the individual geozone view for the factory Belgium and what we can see immediately is the number of assets inside that geozone we can also see how they're split by tag, and with all these assets, both have the same tag, and so the number is the same on both sides. We see the individual assets currently in that geozone uh, at the bottom here. We can also see the stock evolution chart. Uh, so for the month of October, and uh, we see how the stock evolution has evolved. Stock evolution is a very important metric uh, because a stock which is too high can point to inefficiencies in the process. Uh, why are they not moving out? A stock is too low, could be a risk where a certain industrial process is going to stop because the right number of assets is not present where we need it to be. Uh, Another interesting visualization is the dwell times. Uh, so the dwell times give the histogram of how long assets stayed into that geozone. And we can see here, on average, assets stayed between seven and eight days. But we have these outliers and where it could be interesting to figure out who they are and why they've been doing that. Uh, 
Another view is the in-out transitions, which basically for a given time period gives you the number of assets which went in and the number of assets which went out of the geozone. Now, let's take a look at utilization. Uh, utilization is a metric which you can define yourself. And so you set the criteria for what is considered to be a correct and good utilization of an asset. And then the system will start reporting at the fleet level uh, that metric. So in this case, we can see that uh, the average utilization of the assets across the whole fleet is 1 hour and 31 minutes. Uh, we can also see that 95.4% of the assets were at least used once a month. Uh, again, uh, this uh, data uh, can be broken down by criteria. Uh, let's focus on the assets which have the tag container and we see, hey, containers, they're very well used. 100% uh, of them is used. The next aspect I want to show is uh, the flow history. Uh, typically, assets in an industrial process, they follow a certain set of steps. They go, in this example, uh, from a main warehouse outbound to a customer. They return, go back to the main warehouse, but exceptionally, they could go into repair. Uh, now, the system allows you to define these process steps yourself and also define the rules which lead to an asset transitioning from one step to another. Now, once that definition is done, we can start reporting how many assets are on which step. And so we can see here that six assets are on their way back from a customer. Now, that data is also available historically. And so we can see here historically how many assets are in which process step. Finally, we can visualize how assets transition from one step in another. Obviously, uh, this follows the definition which you have done. Right? The next point I want to show is alerts. Uh, in the real environment, you would typically have hundreds or thousands or ten thousands of assets equipped with trackers. Uh, so the idea is not that you're going to look at the data of the individual tracker, tracker by tracker, every single day. Uh, that's undoable. And so the way we envision the system is that you focus on uh, aberrations, exceptions, and things which are not going according to your defined rules. And these rules you express through alert rules. And so the system comes with a big catalog of alert rules which you can tune to your use case. Uh, for example, let us create an alert if assets stay too long in a particular zone. Uh, too long in repair. Uh, it's applicable to all assets uh, if they end up in a repair center for more than three days. And we want to get an email notification. Uh, I think you get the ID, right? These assets, these historical, these alerts are available to see the current state of alerts. However, for analysis, analysis reasons, we can also see the historical alerts. And so we can see month by month, how many alerts were raised, how many alerts were cleared, and what was the nature of those alerts, right? Next up is reports. Uh, there's a big catalog of uh, reports available. Uh, a very basic one is the last known locations. Uh, so we can create a report, my locations, by Excel, which trackers, all of them, and I want to run it now. Now we can also say, hey, I want to run it weekly, uh, on a Sunday at a particular time, and I want to be notified uh, uh, with a certain email address. Uh, voilà. The last thing I want to show you is the dashboard aspects. Uh, the dashboards are views which you can define as, as, a, as a user yourself. Uh, and the idea is that you create visualizations which are very specific and focused on your particular use case. Uh, this specific dashboard, which we're seeing right here, uh, is a site manager whose job it is to keep an eye on the assets in the France site versus the Belgium site. And so he has designed the dashboard here where he sees at the blink of an eye the number of assets in France versus this is Belgium, uh, 80 versus 56, the evolution, the current location of these assets, and the split by type. Uh, now you can go into design mode and really define and 
structure this dashboard yourself. And so we could say, hey, we're only interested in the last 30 days. Let me change it here as well. And actually, we rather see this as a pie chart. And we want to add an overview of uh, the active alerts uh, of the type critical. And we're going to add them here, right? So I think you get the ID. And so you make a dashboard for every use case. And every set of users could have their own dashboards. Huh? I have another dashboard here focusing on the trackers which are doing temperature monitoring, uh, the cool boxes. Uh, and from the dashboard, you can immediately uh, dive into the individual. This concludes the demo. If you want to know more, there are further trainings available on specific aspects of the platform. The full platform documentation is also available online. And of course, the team is ready to answer your questions. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.